what have we missed? Uh, Sean is at two stocks here. Well, Sean took the stock. Sean took the stock, but Moxie just took one right here. Two oh, one. Yeah. Two one stocks. Quick little dash attack. Gonna be looking for some sort of a falling up. Bailey doesn't find it quite yet. Ooh, dash attacking in, but unfortunately that did not cross up. That's that neutral one. That's the up hill, and Sean was going for something spicy. I know. You know that combo. The first hit of Nair, or yeah, first hit of Nair into up air into fair. Not gonna work, but. Uh, that was huge. Yeah, that was, that was huge. I mean, Sean got that stock right there. It's an even game at this point. Look at that. Oh, but Sean leaned in a little bit too much. But unfortunately, Moxie a little bit too late on punishing the end lag of that up B. I don't believe she has any double jump off stage. Whiffing that dash grab because, of course, on a goal, you are invincible. So you can still dash through people in a dash grab animation. A little bit unfortunate for Sean. But hey, he is keeping up this pressure. I love that back away. That was so smart. Yeah, I know. I mean, okay, Sean SD'd first dog, but able to bring it back here. Let's see. Oh, missing the upbeat. Okay, look at, the mo look at the pressure that Moxie is applying. Having to force Sean to pull out these moves that usually you wouldn't see in this type of situation. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's sort of a massive gold lead. Like, Sean is just able to pop that out, up smash, having such deceptively low end lag within that upbeat. And Ooh. that's not going to actually kill. Wow. I was surprised. Yano, the fair into side beat. I was expecting that to kill, but that back throw, putting him at 132. And even, even percentage right here. Any move's going to kill. Speaking of any move, that dash attack is going to bring Sean to a solid 1 0 right here. Game one going to Sean. That was that was a good match. Yeah, and, and this is genuinely like a bit of a difficulty of Wolf, which is like, okay, if I'm not killing you with a two frame, how am I actually genuinely killing you neutral, especially if you are like shield camping significantly. You have to like severely like outplay the opponent uh, movement-wise to be able to actually find something like a back hit, to be able to find something like a dash attack. And Sean really was just never in a good position to get hit by something like that. So a little bit tragic though for Moxie, but game number two maybe will tell a different tale. Exactly, starting off with this quick 26%. Can he continue with anything else? The dash tag right here. Okay. Oh my god. Moxie being able to converge off of that and continuing with these strings. Look at this. 86% of 97. Oh my god. Moxie will not stop putting on this pressure. The damage. The Nair hitting him, sending him to ledge. Oh my gosh, but that side be acting as a bit of an anti is actually going to be catching Moxie's jump through. And again, the same issue. Can you close the delayed double jab into the grab as well? Side B connect. Just going to be sending Sean off stage. Oh, yeah, you saw him right here. Sean is at 137, while Moxie is 116, right? Any strong move is going to do it, but that back, back throw is going to do it right there. All right, Moxie up one stock at 116. Yeah, much like last game, she's a very gentle lead for himself. But Sean actually tries to go for like the bait of an alien dodge, but alas, Wolf fell fast enough just uh, to be able to avoid that lingering back end. Obviously, stopping that down B with the forward air right there. All right, neutral get up. Very, very smart options. Uh, predicting oh, beautiful. What, oh my god, do you see the ledge coverage that Monty had right there? Very nice, very nice use of Nair. But of course, throwing him off stage. Oh, the, oh my gosh, what a footstool. And the weak hit of down air going to take that stock right there. <laughs> that was a funky little interaction. That's like not something that you would really expect to see too often. New trailer classic. Looks for the tech chase, but it lasts a little bit too soon on that dash grab. Gonna be whiffing and stopping his advantage state prematurely. That's gonna be Moxie. Little up go. Jumping out there and who lands with down B like that? That is such a raw option. Oh, it's, 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 I, I mean, to be fair, whenever I play Falcon for the fun, I always pull out that down B because it catches my opponent off guard, you know? But. Catching Boxy off right? That's crazy. Ooh, hitting the up there, not being able to follow it up with anything else. Uh, Sean's at 164 right here. Dash attack not killing, but you're at such a high percent. Oh, yeah. Any move at this point should really kill, right? Yeah, there it is, beautiful. As soon as you can bait that logo cover for most of the cast, Wolf Link will neutral. will be able to do it basically at 135, 140 plus. Yeah. into grab, so consistent on fast followers. Really good tech chasing. Oh my just, God. These are Wolf fundies. These are just fundamental Wolf plays. I know. Oh my God. Your press. Look at that movement. But doesn't matter about your movement that Sean does if Moxie can hit that side B sweet spot. 1-1, one, one. Moxie kicking that game too. That was such a nice last stock right there. Yeah, she played really tight. She played really solid. She did the wolf thing. 
will think setting up tech chases, getting that consistent damage output, and then just being able to really buckle down on baiting people with a lot of your movement. You saw the way that she was jumping in at Sean oftentimes just to be able to bait out another double jump because the last thing that you want to do against Wolf is have to go to ledge against Wolf. You have to either eat A, an F tilt, B down smash, or C, a neutral. Thus, if you can successfully bait out a double jump, punish it, and then force that low recovery, that is how Moxie is able to find so many of those stocks. Game three, one to one. This is looking so even. Exactly. And as we see here, we're on FD right now. Pretty small stage and no platforms to work with. Which will severely hinder uh, Sean's ability to extend his combos. But that does not matter if Sean can continue uh, the pressure. Oh, yeah. Okay, didn't end up grabbing behind him. Foyle doesn't actually go for the full hop instead. Unfortunately, Moxie gonna be whipping that back here, but alas, Sean not finding the punish. Mox punishing that missed tech, and yeah, you got, oh, no. SpaghettiOs! Yeah, you hate to see the uh, buffered air dodge. It is the worst thing to happen in Smash Ultimate. That's the one thing I don't like about this buffering system, but you know what I do like? That back air that Moxie just did, taking that st first stock of hers. Ooh, but the combos that Sean puts up, 43% already. I love the fact that she just backed off. She backed off, she faded back before going through the side B. She didn't go through like any immediate upbeat or anything. Just wanted to make sure that her top loop was as safe as possible. She's okay with taking that multi jab. Why? Because she got her double jump back. But does she have it back this time? Oh no. No, I mean, Wolf's, Wolf's upbeat is not the greatest for recovery. And because of that, Moxie was not able to recover right there. But. You know what Monty is able to do? Apply all this damage, especially with these powerful down smash right there. And twice in a row, look at that. Yeah, missing that F tilt too good yet again. Okay, finally finds that neutral leg. Dash attack up here as well, tries to back off, but Wolf neutral leg just a little bit too active, catching Sean's next option. Obviously, and now hitting that dash attack right there. Sean has rage, which means any strong attack is like the knockback is increased by tenfold, right? Especially at 140%. Moxie needs to get a kill move right here. He's trying Ooh. to go that side piece. Yeah, a lot of off-stage interactions. Foyle is actually the lower hitbox of it. Able to uh, get that blind spot on down B. Now all of a sudden, 77%. Super doable, especially if she keeps finding those down kills that have just been so lucky to keep tripping through it. Oh my god, and you see those these follow-ups. Sean is already at 57%. This is looking, this is looking bad for Moxie, especially with her two SDs. But it doesn't matter because it is practically an even game at this point. Oh, the spacing. The spacing on that Foyle using it all the way with punishing that side B with that F smash. Jumping out there, baited the recovery. There it is. You have no more mix left. But alas, oh Moxie didn't get her hitbox out in time. Sean found the command grab. Exactly. And that means Sean is able to recover. But he's not able to recover from this up smash. Moxie popping off. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame her. Look at this. 2-1. Moxie is going to take game three. FD really worked for a uh, wolf right there, you know? Yeah, I, I feel like just ultimately, you know, she has seen it a couple of times. That last situation was actually so well, too. She was abusing wolf buttons. You know what those are? <laughs> yeah. Auto cancel back here, baby. You think you're going to like catch my landing, silly goose? Eat an up smash instead. Two scoops is all that it's going to take. Uh, yeah, she played that situation really beautifully. Her damage output, I feel like her execution just got like really, really tight. Uh, Sean is now really struggling to match that. And I don't know how that game would have went uh, for Sean had it not been for those two SDs. Exactly. I mean, you know, Wolf is one of those characters, especially like Cloud, where it's like, um, What's n -lag, you know? Yeah, what is that thing? You know? Sometimes non-existent, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't need that thing. I, I've never seen it happen. Yeah, but, sometimes uh, you just deal enough shield damage. Sometimes you just auto-cancel things fast enough that you can just get away with some buttons, some of them more middle than others. Game number four, Sean's potential final game of all that. Exactly. But Sean moving to Smashville here. Small stage, especially with this one middle platform. That will... That will help Sean extend these combos, especially what he's doing right here, missing the command grab. But oh, yeah. Moxie's already at 84% right here. Okay, and again, this down smash cover, just still be able to cover the cross up. No option looks safe for Sean. Popping out that neutral yet again, air dodging back on there. That was such tight spacing. After a full a bit of stage control, Sean is dipping all the way out there, committed a little bit too much, but then so does Moxie. Doesn't go for the immediate punish with like a dash grab. Obvi and especially. And Moxie is at 123. And okay, Sean is able to get that kill right there. You know, Moxie is going to have to pull it back in order to make this an even game right here. You know? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, whipping that up smash. Quick little whiff punish with that up. Then Sean just gonna be backing off a little bit. This could be a huge punish. Tries to punish like an immediate side beat with that only down. And, but again, Moxie is just so patient with some of the recoveries, even in those like awful positions. Yeah. And um, Sean's still at three stocks and being able to recover. Never mind that weak nair gonna stop. Oh, never mind. He was able to grab Wedge. Okay. Yeah, no. Captain Falcon with Rage. Such a scary thing you do not want to deal with. She missed the ledge trump. I don't think she just meant to dip off stage like that. Just jumping right into the jab yet again. Has to wait, wait, just in case Sean goes for like a down and makes it back on. Mutually, it's going to be the move of choice. But what's actually going to be able to kill you? I, I, especially, I guess not the Nair, but that dash attack is going to do it. High damage and high knockback. Especially the only move that I feel like that Wolf had in that moment that was A, fast enough, B, reach that fall out to the side. So good spacing, good timing. Moxie, she wants that falling fully in because you already know the damage output that she is capable of. I know. You already see it. Two forward airs, and Sean's already at 31. Meanwhile, uh, Sean being, using, again, the rapid jab, a lot of damage. Oh, catching that landing with the down smash. Sean at 70, the amount of damage. Again, like you said, Wolf applies a lot of it. Oh, yeah. And catching that gold back onto the stage. A little bit antsy that time around. And Sean found that punish, found that stock, and found that kill. Moxie just being stupidly patient with the move. The kill, neutral, and good coverage. Again, there it is, that auto cancel back here. You cover the nail dodge, that's A okay. You back on time to be able to still get an F to it. But it's so hard for Sean to come back on stage, especially with the Wolf buttons, you know? Down smash, uh, wow. side tilt. Air, but that doesn't matter if you get hit by the up smash such a powerful move as well this is an even game right here yeah no matter what even if she whiffs she still has another punish ready but no double jump off stage has to go for the immediate recovery and sean was not ready for it that time yeah no both of them just trying to get one of them to overcommit. but there's the four throw right there there and the nair okay moxie is forced at ledge the spike okay the trade stopping either of the pressure. Oh, yeah. oh, that could be it, but doesn't actually find the neutral into the knee. It's a bit of an interesting wheel confirmed to hit. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but now another back through to set up another offstage situation. Tries to go through the low recovery, makes it back on thanks to that ledge attack, and now all of a sudden that's going to be with punish, is what I would say. Alas, ultimate and multi hits do not go together. I know. That second oh. hit, not hitting, but doesn't matter if Sean cannot. Come back to ledge. Watson is going to win this on game four. Uh, yeah. Three one. Yeah. yeah. Won that game four, won that set, and I gotta say, despite like that SD at the end, uh, Moxie, she was playing super tight. Uh, her damage applet, her execution, but specifically the, thi the thing that I feel like uh, just distinguished her in that game was her option coverage. The way that she was like, okay, look, I'm gonna go for the back here. Oh, it's fine, I whiffed it, that's fine. You just landed F tilt, I'm gonna go back off stage. Drop down, double jump, back here. Oh, it whiffed, that's okay. I'm still at the ledge, I can still continue to ledge trap. It felt like there were so many different layers on top of layers to her pressure to her execution, to the amount of damage that she was dealing. Whoa. That felt like Sean in a lot of these situations was like, whoa, I'm suffocated, cut it out. Yeah, I know, I mean, and we don't want to sleep on Sean either. Sean was dealing with the pressure oh, yeah. very well. I mean, you know, having to move around all these very nice uh, attacks. But we're gonna move on here. Uh, Losers finals, uh, Goblin versus Moxie. Let's see what happens, you know? Yep, we talked about it before. Yet another match of volatility. I feel like it's impossible to not have a volatile match. It is difficult for Wolf to catch jump hits sometimes, especially when you consider Wolf's out of shield, which can be sometimes lackluster. When you consider uh, the fact that maybe, you know, going through like a rising button as Wolf can be quite in the middle sometimes, Goblin's gonna get away with a lot of neutral links. I know, and I was about to say, Goblin was putting on all that percent at the beginning, but doesn't matter. Moxie can match it, especially with... Beautiful. Oh my god, the roll read right there with the down smash. Such a great read right there. Yep. All right, read two. You push somebody in, you're able to cover the tech in place and a roll out, excuse me, with the forward hit of the down smash and the back hit will cover goals in. The only thing that would actually, you know, avoid the entire situation is to get up attack. Well, if you go in, you might also still sometimes survive the down smash. Alas, Moxie not going to be surviving her own sticks, unfortunately, SD. Yeah, no. And now Goblin has an easier time coming back, wow. but never mind. The Nair into down smash. Again, these confirmed such a powerful tool. Doesn't matter if Goblin can pull out these quick and easy combos. The 48%, look at that. 
Oh, absolutely. Right now, I'm just trying to focus some of these down tilts. But Moxie, she is playing so tight. Double forward and a new trailer as well. Forces the air dodge. Doesn't actually find the down tilt in time. I wonder if that was supposed to be uh, down angled F tilt instead. But either way, ooh, missing the tech chase unconventionally, but still gets that stock. Yeah, no. This is pretty much an even game right here. Moxie can easily bring back the percentage. Or, yeah, Goblin can easily bring it back. Right here. And they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. And now it's just a sense of who can continue the combo strings, which obviously Goblin is right now. Look at this. Dashing and dashing out. That dash out is how you bait people into poor ledge options like a ledge roll. That's how you punish those side Bs. But Moxie, she was aware of that situation, just barely able to fade back past that back hill, trying to go for the down tilt here, looking for the next big hit. Yeah, no. It's just one strong move that's going to do it right there. The first way going to come out, but doesn't matter if the jab back air is going to take game one right here, moving on to game two. I wonder if Moxie's going to adapt to that. I mean, they both did really well, and it was pretty even for the most part. Volatility, back and forth. There is no such thing as a link when you're fighting somebody like Goblin, because we just saw what happened. They can make those things disappear. Uh, but I got to say, even then, Moxie, she's playing tight. She's smiling at herself. Yeah. She's feeling good. She hit that neutral layer down smash, that weak neutral layer down smash. I don't think that was real. It looked, it might have been. But either way, game number two, I feel like this is such a doable set for both players. Yeah, no, obviously. The starting off with that, the round start, uh, Nair to forward smash, the quick 38, very nice for Goblin. Oh, yeah. Off stage as well. What What is Goblin going to apply for Moxie to do? Apparently nothing, look at this. Jump from lunch. It's a wolf classic. Yeah, exactly. You know it, you love it. And already 69% onto the board here. Trying to come back in with that neutral lane, setting up a tech chase. And uh, yeah, Moxie lives another day. But those tech chases that Goblin puts you in, they are awful positions to be in. That's two times she has tech rolled out. I want to see if Goblin gets. Yeah, no. I mean, and, and not only Goblin can do that, Moxie can do it as well. But Moxie can't do what Goblin just did. That powerful side beat, taking that first stock. Let's see if... <laughs> Bronxy can pull out any of the strong moves, because the strong moves wow. are pretty slow for what they are, you know? Plat to plat, coast to coast, tries to go through the up tilt, but alas, does so in the wrong direction. Had she done it to the right, it might have connected. That's the jab and dashing in, gets the back hit, but alas, that's not going to be the sweet spot. It does not matter. Goblin continues their pressure sequence. I know. Ooh, getting that weak hit of jab, you don't want, you hate to see it, honestly. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He keeps on getting the sour spot. When are we gonna go? Oh my God, the counter! When are we gonna get these strong knee stocks? That's a good question, but ooh, that time we're not gonna be whiffing that. Still, the up puts you in such a, like a nasty position to land them. Goblin doesn't mind that at all. Look at that tech chase, beautiful. Yeah, no, the tech chase into the throw, very nice. One of them just waiting for one of each other to overcommit to a move. There it is, right there. That nair sending him off stage. And now the question is, another nair. No double jump off stage, it should be a drop off neutrally. But alas, she doesn't drift in fully enough to the left. She doesn't read Goblin's drift. She misses that tech. She gets hit with that jab into the up hill, and all of a sudden, that is Goblin. Three stocks to one. Does uh, forward throw just to get stage control. Wow. Yeah, no. Now, now Moxie just needs a throw right here. Putting in, what, a ton of pummels, but not a throw, surprising. Now Goblin has a ton of rage wow. to work with, which you don't want Roy to have. Falling forward, who still does not do it quite yet. 202%, sunk the ledge, but finally lingering late hit neutrally is going to be able to do it. I know, that Nair is such a great move. Both Wolf and Roy have such great Nairs. The, vo the volatility of both of them have different uses, but still, amazing in each of their own right. The Goblin put on this percent right here. And again, you, you can't even like try to find like a single window of opening because if you whip, if you mess up on your own punish, Goblin has a much better one in store. Just sitting there in shield and tries to go through the punish on the tech rollout. Doesn't actually find it that time. A little bit too far back. She, Moxie, she is struggling this time. I know. I mean, look at the look at the stock lead. Goblin's at two, while Moxie's at a high one stock right here. Moxie needs to put it, tone it back in, bring it in, and get bring this back. You know. Oh my gosh, is yeah. that going to be able to do it? Yes, it will be. I don't believe she had a double jump out no. there. Both Wolf and Roy no. live and die by that double jump off stage. If they get sent back a little bit too far, there is absolutely nothing that you can do in that moment. Goblin up 2-0. to oh. Moxie, she played so solid that game one. That game two, that was all Goblin. That was all Buttons, baby. Exactly. They're going to run it back here. Game three. Listen, Moxie has to stop 
fearing the pressure, all right? He might get hit by a ton of moves, which, I mean, sure, does a lot of damage and may put you in disadvantage, but you can't get phased by it because if you do, that's what Goblin wants, and then Goblin will take advantage of it even harder. It does not matter, though. Look at all of this coverage. Look at all of this damage from Goblin already. 52%, all but guaranteed. And looking to get a tech chase with that down tilt as well. Up B as a get off me option. Moxie, you need to open. How do you open? You do not because she tech rolled again. She tech rolled out again. And she finally died for it. Yeah, no. Zero to death. Goblin still has not taken a single hit already. Never mind. I'm, I'm going to break that streak right there. But Moxie trying to get a tech board, not going to work. And Goblin is going to get in some major damage, 30% already. Okay, just go for a bit of a funny little ledge trap option. Doesn't uh, actually find the ledge jump, double jump, up here, back onto the stage. Goblin just holding it down, gets that grab, forcing her off stage yet again. And she makes it back on, and she gets a punish for the two. Yeah, no, that fourth throw, sending Goblin off stage. Very bad position to be, be in right here. But trading spots, now it's just in sense of who can get in the percentage. Obviously, Goblin's a stock of head. So, Goblin has a little more, can do a little more ballsy things. But, you know, obviously, That's oh, right. you saw him right there. You saw that right there, the up, up smash. Not hitting, but almost going for that. But that, that combo's going to kill That food is insane. Because think about it this way. You shield neutral. Oh, well, you just got hit with neutral on shield. That thing is safe. You got hit by it. Cool. That confirms it's a jab. If you DI out, maybe a back hit. And, oh, no. The trade was so tragic for Moxie. Did you just see that? The oh, yeah. forward air stopped the side B, even though the claw anim the claw animation came out, it still didn't hit Goblin. Ultimate moment, right? Ultimate moment, baby. <laughs> but f -tilt finally going to be able to connect. Moxie gets that free stock off. But the question is, is it a little bit too late? Goblin has taken stage control away and going through the immediate down in just in case she went for the high recovery. 69%, but what a combo for Moxie. Uh, I know. All right, being at 92 here, Moxie is in a bad position. Any wrong move, and this could be the set knocking her out of the bracket right here. Okay, she makes it back on. Goblin tried to scoop her up with that upbeat, but uh, she was just a little bit too far back, and Goblin just was a little too slow. And such a good hoot heavily mix up. Oh my god! Did you see that? He purposely drifted all the way to the left and started doing his side beat to the right in order to kill Moxie. That was such a great move by Goblin. Yeah, that was just like a panic option at the end of the day. Moxie, she did incredible. She got, she ended up getting third at this event. He and Hallmat coming in all the way from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, what that spot dodge was, was like, hey, I just made it back onto stage barely with side B. If you rush on this punish, I just, dude, I'm panicking. I just wanted to be able to spot dodge in that moment. And then alas, side B kills not about your spot dodges. It covers all. It still gets the stock. It still is going to be able to kill you. And that's going to be Goblin fighting his way back into grand finals for the run back with Jake. Yeah, no. And this grand finals is especially going to be very tense because they're going to be fighting for the flight, for the free flight and oh, hotel yeah. for DreamHack, right? Big first place finish, yeah. That's a huge, huge prize. Uh, I believe it's to DreamHack San Diego, yes. if I'm not mistaken. In as, April. In April, yeah, beautiful. And as well as a nice, hefty cash prize. So both Goblin, both Jake, they want to be able to take it home, as did anybody else competing today. And now moving on to grand finals, we're going to throw it to Kaget right now. Take it away. All right, everybody, it's time for grand finals of Holiday Mercury. How are you guys feeling? We've got Goblin coming back here in grand finals from loser side. He's going to have to reset the bracket against his opponent, Jake, sitting in winner's side. Jake, come up here. They are playing for the title of Smash Ultimate Champion here at Holiday March 30, 2022. Guys, make some noise for Grand Finals! Take it away, production. All right, thank you, Cyrus. So, Grand Finals, this is going to be the gun back of what we saw in Winner's Side. And what did we see in Winner's Side? A tale of volatility, a tale of uh, <laughs> stolen games, and uh, perhaps a, a little match. bit of DLC. Those are close games <laughs> over and over, and unpredictable comebacks of I, plenty. I know. I mean, you saw it. You saw the stolen stocks from Goblin. You saw both of them trading the percentage from the diamond and oh, yeah. the hilt of the swords. Now we're just going to see, are they, re are they ready for the, are they ready to adapt, you know? Yeah, I think it'll be ready to that. I think it'll be ready for this going back. Only time will tell. Everybody, game number one of Grand Finals here at Hallmat. This is it, the penultimate match. Perhaps one of two if Goblin is going to be able to get that bracket reset or not. Coming in hot off that win off of Moxie. And already Jake 
fishing. He is looking for that up to. I know, but Goblin is able to start off the percentage with a solid 22, but doesn't matter if Jake can get this quick and easy combo with a 45%. The, gold, the wooden tools helping him connect all the top, all these moves together. Yeah. Oh yeah, 53% and counting. Huge whiff there, and again, keeps the directional air dodging for that time around. Jake was so non-committal in his sequence that he was just able to get back on, find that pivot grab, find that punish, and now all of a sudden, Jake is building himself the tools to success. Exactly, having his stone tools here and catching Goblin with the up smash. Now we're gonna see him go mine for them diamonds, right? Ooh, oh, wasn't able to tag off the block, you know? Yeah, block disappeared, super, super late, but getting that jab into that F smash. That's that Jeff smash, baby. That is a nasty place to be in. And footstool, anvil. That is it, baby. That is that 20, 22 out of shield option. What is 5% out of shield? Absolutely not. I can anvil, I can kill you at 90. Hope but you know, you know what else Jake can do? Have that combo. Quick 33 already, and the up smash. 40 out of 54. Meanwhile, the second stock has barely happened, and the anvil, such strong moves Jake has to use. All right, Goblin's just staying at ledge, just letting him mind. All right, the tnt has gone. Now he's able to come back on stage and apply this pressure and percentage. That was truly a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, because if you just kind of let TNT happen, all of a sudden, A, you run out of ledge and vulnerability, B, you're also giving Steve stupid materials because of the material of resource pool that comes out of mining on TNT. But I gotta say, right now, Jake is looking to apply some pressure here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, obviously. He has diamond tools right now and our iron tools. And has diamond on stock right here. One, J our Goblin's at 112. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. you know, Jake's at 100. Oh my god, missing that back here. Jake getting it in his own. It's 2 1 right here. Can he be able, can Goblin be able to take this Honestly, back? Honestly, good. I, I love the idea from Goblin. I love yeah. the fact that he was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to respect these blocks. I'm going to still try to fight the situation regardless. At the end of the day, they looked through like that tech roll in uh, to be able to punish that with like an up smash. Didn't exactly find it as anticipated, but that is a, okay, 85%. And Jake going out there through the edge guard, but dove in a little bit too deep. Doesn't matter. I mean, he's able to recover. Steve Elytra, such a great move in Minecraft and such a great groove in, uh, move and in uh, Smash as well. I mean, you're able to recover from practically any of the stage. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> I like the patience from Jake there, but is Upfield going to be able to kill? Not quite. Now is kind of the point where it will be able to do so, not unless Goblin finds something else first. I know. Jake has zero materials right now, only having gold and diamond. You can't even do anything with the gold because you don't have iron to use it with. Getting that Nair. Okay. Jake is still on his second stock, though, so don't count him out, right? Oh, yeah. Up to finally going to be able to do it. At some point, Shield is no longer safe enough to be able to get the job done. Backing off a little bit, 109%. We've seen Gob do these. So, honestly, is what I would say, as Jake is going to be able to take game one of Grand Finals. Yeah, no, I mean, I was about to say, last set, he saw Goblin take it back from, like, what? Uh, reverse 3, reverse 3 0. But. I mean, Jake being able to manage this, sneak in that sly back air. The diamond obviously taking that stock. I mean, such such powerful character, especially with the diamonds. You don't even need diamonds, but when you do have them, it's his win condition. You're already gone. Let's That's, see how. It's, his, it's one of his many win conditions. <laughs> yeah. Steve has an absolute plethora of them. Okay, he's just going to be backing off a little bit, finding that anvil as well. Jake just doing exactly what he loves to do best, and that is play that keep away game. Anvil just saying, get off me over and over. I want time to mine, baby. Exactly. I mean, pretty even game right here. Getting in that back here. All right, you're at disadvantage and getting hit by the down tilt. All right, is he going to be able to use the minecart, bring it to the TNT? Not going to work right here. Oh my god, you saw Goblin try to hit Jake into the TNT in order to get some extra damage, but it just did not work. Yeah. Okay, ooh, within that side, that's going to be a huge punish on Jake's end. Up tilt into the back here as well. Okay, backing off a little bit here, just jumping all over Goblin's face. That anvil is so nasty. You have to respect it as an option. You always have to be ready for it. Yeah, I know. He, he put fear in Goblin, and Goblin released really shield, and was like, okay, it's time to use the anvil, and because of that, that knockback is insane and damage as well. But, you know, Jake has Diamond on deck, which means he can still lose the stock and not have to worry about it because oh, yeah. of his win condition, you know? <laughs> 
Okay, goes for the jab, and then again, you don't even have to go for like these bad neutral air dodges as team, because you always have anvil in scoring, and that is something that not a lot of kill teams have really effective tools to deal with. Falling noodle hit up in into strong hit, does it for Goblin, nice creative control, and all of a sudden 77% and stuck in a corner, but Jake doesn't actually assume stage, all he wants to do is mine. I know, all right, Goblin being at 104 right here, can he bring back this percentage? It, just a couple of strong hits, and that will be it. I mean, look at that. Already at 45, you just need a kill confirmed right here. They're trying to destroy the crafting table. But Jake's able to come back on stage, so he doesn't really have the time to do it. Okay, go through that up in. And now Jake, ooh, gonna be able to just tech off that beautifully. Not gonna be sent off stage, but ends up going to the left side nonetheless. Getting that mine card called out, getting that recovery called out, but that is not gonna be enough quite yet. Goblin cannot take that stock, is what I would say. There it is, that positional pressure. Jumped in, dashed in, and was able to bait and punish that goal. I know, I mean, okay, Goblin can keep his pool under these tense situations. He already brought it back. Listen, it's a 2-1 situation right here. Meanwhile, Roy having rage. Jake has to avoid these strong hits because one too many and you're already gone. Oh, and Goblin was almost gone himself. Uh, Jake was looking for that anvil. Still catches that landing with that up smash. And I gotta say, Goblin's composure is honestly immaculate. I have no idea how somebody does this, but they have just, even with all of the nonsense that's been kind of happening throughout today, Goblin has just been really keeping themselves in the game. I know. I mean, that's what Goblin is really known for, that composure that he has. Being able to bring, being able to bring games back is such an important skill to have. And Goblin has it, not only being such a great player in the game, being a great player with the mentality, but even game right here, Jake's trying to get the materials. Oh yeah, Jake's trying to get those mats, but Goblin is not going to be letting him have any of that whatsoever. He's such a good stall. That dip down moves, but that gold from ledge. Remember, Steve's goal goes so, so long. One full hop, the other short hop, and it was Jake who ended up winning that interaction. Still just backing off here, looking for that block extension on the up smash. This is so scary. I know. Having Diamond right here, this could be anyone's game, really. Jake, all he needs is like an up tilt to back air. Meanwhile, uh, Goblin just needs like a jab to back air. That both of them just trying to get one of each other to overcommit the neutral here. The tension, it is immense. Oh my god, what was that? Jake is busting out all of the creative mode options here and just still more than content, more than happy to get as much iron as possible. Goblin has accepted their fate. Anvil's mine cards, you know what man, just have it already. Is that kill? Wait, who got what? Jake F smash, baby. That's gonna take game two. <laughs> I thought Goblin's won. I, I, I mean, I, I, it was it was close quarter, so I could barely tell. I just saw I just saw a, I just saw Steve swing in the blue thing, and I was like, yep, yep, Jake F smash. Damn. I <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's game two. I mean, that was that was a uh, that was close, but I mean, Jake was able to put around the blocks and have Goblin having to deal with all this movement, and Jake just like, no, 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 watch this F smash. Why not? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. But actually not converting off of that up tilt. I'm not sure why. Maybe Jake didn't uh, exactly think that he was going to connect. Didn't react to hit confirm on time. And now all of a sudden, okay, look at who that was up tilt yet again. And Goblin is sitting in shield. And CQC, Jake's not going for those grabs. So he can get away with that get off me option. I know. And able to get the stone as well, right? Now he's able to apply a little bit more damage because Goblin has him at 98%. What is he going to do? Bring Goblin to 78. We're trying to hit Goblin with the TNT. Not going to work here. But now we're going to see him mining for the materials. Now he's going to be getting that back here. Just going to be jumping back just a little teeny tiny bit here. Looking for that jab. Back to the four. Just a bit of stage control. All right, setting up with blocks yet again. I gotta say, Jake is just continuing to stick to his game plan, and honestly, why wouldn't you? But that F tilt actually going to be going above and below all of the blocks that he set up. Yeah, I know. I mean, you saw him dash to the left, and he got stopped by the block, but that didn't matter because he was able to pull out the F tilt and, and get him right there. 2-3 right here. Jake is at over 100, which means he has the rage to, you know, to kill early. But that doesn't mean Jake can't pull out some random Steve stuff in order to get that cheese kill as well, you know? Yeah. Okay. 
Jake just gonna be mining a little tiny bit, looking through that jump call out. Not gonna be able to find it. Comes back in with that mine call. Doesn't take that stock off quite yet. Backing off, backing off, backing off. But a little bit too late on the punish of that side B. Had the right idea, just a little bit too slow. I know. I mean, that one's still at 150 here. Max Rage. Now let's see. Just needs a solid kill move. That jab into back air is going to do it. Such a good confirm to have, man. Yeah, such a good confirm, but honestly, we saw this in game five of winning side finals. But Lu Jake was at this kind of a deficit and ended up making it all the way back. All it starts from is that one stock. Can he do this? Yeah, no, all you need is momentum and diamond, which Jake has both right here. But Goblin is keeping his composure and hitting all of these aerials. Jake's at 92, Goblin is at or 40, 47 right here. What's gonna happen? <laughs> okay, maybe looking through like a jump call out there with the up -out. Doesn't actually find it. Jake has to make it back onto the ledge again. Goblin dashing. I don't know what those dashes are all about. Maybe it's movement bait. Maybe it's a missed ledge jump. Nonetheless, that is gonna be Gob stuck at the ledge. That's gonna be a huge mind call setup, but it does not matter. He executes. Goblin executes. Found the kill confirmed that they needed in that moment. Got the jab into the back case. That's the stock. That's gonna be the game. Gob is in it. Such, again, that confirm, so great. I mean, Taking what? Taking the game three right there, bringing it to a 2-1 set right here. Jake still has this under control. He can't lose composure. Meanwhile, Goblin keeping his cool. I think we're gonna see a run back right here. Oh, let's see what happens. Yeah, they're just gonna be keeping it sticking to Pokemon Stadium 2. And I also gotta say, there was definitely something to be said about the tale of the two composions. Right, Jake, a little bit more emotional, a little bit more stressed after even losing like a single game. Whereas Goblin has just been cold, dead, staring this entire time. Look, cold, dead, staring, just by doing nothing from that down throw. Just looked at Jake, said, what are you gonna do, buddy? You're gonna air dodge? Yeah, you're gonna air dodge. Yeah, no, I mean, again, the composure that Goblin has, again, what he is known for, he is able to look at a bad situation and be like, eh, what's the worst guy that can happen? Like, watch this, this four throw, maybe a back air? Uh, this is, okay, who cares? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, just gonna be backing off mining a little tiny bit more, but Goblin actually able to outspace Jake in that moment, up airs, but not able to find anything else off of it. Tries to set up a bit of a tech chase there, that was a 50. Either you jump and catch a jump with uphill, or you try to go through the tech chase with back hill. Yeah, no. But Jake's at 138 right here, having trouble coming back to stage, is able to. I just realized he doesn't even stop stone materials yet. Getting caught in the minecart right here. Goblin is only at 57. What is he going to do? Get that up air in. They get that up here, he doesn't find the strong hit that time around. Yeah. Neither uh, will that back here, but at least Jake is stuck at the ledge. This is exactly where Goblin would want him, but oh my goodness, that up out of shield. I don't know who Goblin was hitting, but it definitely was not Jake that time. Yeah, no, I'm surprised he didn't hold shield, but instead I think he used the, uh, the up to take the damage, but not the shield damage, because that is what I think he wants oh, more, yeah. you know? Oh, but setting up that TNT, maybe not fully aware of what Goblin was on stage at that point in time. Makes it back on all the way around. Oh, this could be huge, but alas, the mind club didn't end up grabbing uh, Goblin, and you're gonna see like Jake reeling back, feeling these neutral legs in real life. Yeah, no, I mean, these, these strong hits are what bring up the percent, and already at 51, missing the up smash, or waving it, but doesn't matter. These down tilts, trying to destroy the blocks, pressuring Jake into doing something that would rather be unfavorable, you know? Oh yeah. Okay, oh, just keeps up with all of these juggles, minecarts, and Goblin. He went for that rising back air just in case that Jake had opted to jump out of the minecart instead. Uh, and that's gonna be a jab into the back air again. And you're gonna see Jake is getting tilted. Jake is Jake is getting tilted. But he finally has the diamond, which means he can bring this back. It's not the it. I mean, okay, it's Goblin. Come back to always gonna yeah. be difficult. They're always gonna be godlike innately in concept. Steve might have a bit of an easier time with it, but not if Goblin's going all the way out there. Oh my god, these weak hits of forward air. It's such a such a weird thing. It, okay, never mind. I was about to say something about forward air, but that forward smash is gonna take that stock. That spacing was immaculate. To be able to fade back like that, oh that's god. a huge F smash. Get the block, but the ugly upbeat from Goblin saying, yo, enough of this nonsense. I'm gonna be able to make it back on, but not before you're taking 76%. Jake is continuing this onslaught, tries to cover the tech roll out. Good weight on the Goblin smash. Oh, the Diamond Sword broke right here. Now your kill, your Jake F smash, not gonna be available. He's, you're gonna see him trying to run away and get materials. Ooh, building the stone tools in order for that sword to be back. You need all of your tools at oh, yeah. all times, man. 
or else you're not going to be able to play the game properly. All right, now having Diamond all tools, let's see what happens. You know? Has Diamond on deck yet again. Goes through that same kind of down smash. Shut up. Doesn't actually get the hit that he needed. But Jake, at expense of going through all of these these pulls, ended up putting himself into disadvantage. Ended up putting himself into the corner. And, and oh my god. Oh, what? Oh, my. Oh, no, no. He's still hot. Oh, never mind. Uh, it's my bad. Uh, game four. Goblin taking that. You saw, you saw him uh, missing the tech on the block and the neutral get up. You thought, oh, you know, maybe he's alive. Maybe Goblin's going to do something wrong. No. Goblin plays it, plays it patient because Goblin knows I can punish a lot of moves because I'm super fast with what I'm doing. Uh, Jake just needs to move around Roy's options, and we're, we're, we might see that happen in game five. I mean, a lot of this is a mental battle. Right now, Goblin is the one who is winning the boy of attrition. You can see the difference in the mentality between the two. Just because of like, hey, if you are like stressed out, you're not gonna be executing as much. It's just really, really basic decision making. It's basic psychology. Jake needs to take a deep breath and bring himself back into it. Because if not, Goblin's advantage state, I mean, let me tell you, that thing breaks mental states. That thing oh, yeah. is, <laughs> that thing gives psychiatrists a reason to keep being. I know. I mean, you see, you see it happen in every set he's playing, and especially in this one. Like, come on, Jake is our uh, Goblin is already at a stock ahead. Meanwhile, Jake is trying to get all the materials he needs in order to have this stock difference depleted. You know? Oh yeah. Tries to come in like super non-committal. Gets all those soft hits of those up hits. Gotta mix something up here. Really good block extension though, using yeah. crafting table to extend his S smash. Yeah, no. Uh, craft, crafting table extensions, you, you see it happen in some situations. In some situations, you're like, oh, why did that happen? And in other situations, you love to see it. Ooh, that was a weird interaction right that there. That was a weird interaction. That was a lot of hitboxes. You gotta worry about TNT, you gotta worry about Anvil, and it does not matter because look at all of that ladder 50%. Jake has all but evened up this damage. At this point in time, he is playing with a lot of momentum, and that spacing was excellent. Oh, yeah, no. The Gold Force match coming out faster than you think it would now. It's an even game right here, but the sword has gone away. That jab into the back end as well. Jake right now just playing back a little tiny bit here. Looking for a way to be able to catch Goblin's landing, but that up end did not come into fruition. Yeah, I mean, Jake has no materials at this point. You are in a bad state, and especially with that parry up here. Now, you're gonna have three iron going back, crafting the diamonds. He has to get some materials, or else he's in a bad state. Ooh, punch that with, uh, but Goblin is playing so aggressive. Jake finally able to capitalize off that aggression, get some blocks, get some mats, and that's only the soft spot of the four lead. Finally finds those strong hits, so he's able to get some real damage onto the boy lead, but is it too late? No, I mean, maybe. I mean, watch this. Oh, never mind. The up tilt into four there. Goblin is at 105, but doesn't matter. Goblin. He did too much. He wasn't actually able to get that tech chase. Jake, I'm going to be looking for the wildest of up B hitboxes. Setting up the juggle, but doesn't commit to the up smash. I know. If he committed, that would have been game set and match right there. But no, Goblin is using this second life in order to do it. it. Never mind. That's, That's gonna, gonna be, be it. Set? Yeah. yeah, beautiful stuff. Jake able to close it out with the anvil, able to take the run back over Goblin, beating everybody in his path, not losing a single set today. Jake is going to be a holiday maturity 2022 Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Singles Champion. Yeah, that was such an impressive set. I mean, and not only that, Jake's gonna take home that that cash prize, that dream hat ticket, uh, the dream hack flight, and the hotel as well. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big, big prizes. Um, so once again, congratulations. Um, at the end of the day, you can never count out Steve. You can never count out Jake. You can't count out Goblin either. Um, that was, you know, to be able to actually pull yourself back in mentally after that first stock, yeah. I actually think is like pretty incredible because the last thing that you want in that moment is for somebody to make that bracket reset against you. The last thing that you want is somebody to just totally flip the tables on you um, like that and then have to play through another potential five more games. The I fact know. that Jake was able to come back from what was virtually zero to death <laughs> in the beginning of that game yeah. through five and then still win that set to, to win that game, I mean, I think is excellent. I know. Honing it in and the mentality of the game is all, is like, it's a 50-50 bounce. If you don't have that mentality, you're yeah. not going to do well. And obviously, both of these players have that mentality oh, yeah. in order to hone it in, play the game properly. But In the meantime, let's yeah. quickly throw it over to Cyrus to catch one more time. Take it away, buddy.
Once again, everyone congratulate our Holiday Mercury 2222 champion, Jake. So Jake, that was an intense Game 5 Grand Finals, right after a Game 5 Winners Finals against Goblin. How are you feeling right now? What's, how are you feeling? What's on your mind? Uh, I'm pretty excited, you know. Um, to be honest, like, me and Goblin go like pretty back and forth. And like, uh, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. And like, you know, first place is the only one that gets the DreamHack stuff. So I'm very happy that I was able to, you know, get the win here. Well, you guys sure had a really intense set. You know, you played really, really amazing. So, so like, really hot set, a lot of adaptation, a lot of movement. And once again, congratulations. You know, it, you really played incredible all tournaments. And like you said, we got some amazing prizes. You know, courtesy of Holiday Mitsuri. We also got some, a lot of goodies from our friends over at Glitch. And we got one more little prize for you. I'm actually going to let someone else introduce that. Can you, everyone, please welcome Alex Trebelli to the stage. Thank you, Cact. Congratulations, Jake. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just here to say thank you to Holiday Matsuri for doing amazing things, especially Jeff, Cact, the entire TO team, as always. I love when events are run very well, and this was, this was fun to be a part of and check out and see how great it's grown. But, Jake, I'm here on behalf of DreamHack. Obviously, you might know that you have now officially won a trip to San Diego, California, April 7th and 9th. Flight, hotel, everything, and I'm even going to throw you in the bracket for free, so just because I like, because you're Florida. But yeah, congrats again. Just want to say thank you. Please tune into all the DreamHack events we have planned next year. Also, see you in June. We're going to have Smash back at all of those. So thank you, guys in the crowd. Thank you for coming out. Hope you enjoyed Smash Ultimate here at Holiday Matsuri. Thank you. You know, I like the idea for the second that the final prize was just going to be Jabali. Like, that was it. That was going to be it. Like, yeah, any final secret third surprise? I mean, Jabali, there you go. You got to hang out with him. I mean, that's my goal. Like, that's the I, I would not complain if it was just, you know, Jabali, give me that handshake, be like. That's it? You, you know, what? you know <laughs> what the prize above all else? You don't need that cash prize. You don't need that flight. You need that firm handshake from Jabali. But everybody, thank you so much for listening to us talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, I don't know if there's actually going to be another event after, if this is going to be the last actual thing for that's it for today. We're going to have some more games tomorrow. Yeah. Everybody, thank you for listening to us. First and foremost, follow my lovely, incredible co-caster, John Conboy, at... Thank you. And follow... Uh, What's your Twitter? Uh, at what? John Conboy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, follow Dara here. It's an incredible caster. I'm so glad she was with me today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Everybody, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. If you're here at Holiday Matsuri, I hope you enjoy the rest of the con. And we will see you tomorrow with some more games. Till then. See ya. Hit it. Uh, oh, God. Okay. <laughs>